you're listening to the Board Game Snobs podcast, a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> Snobs Podcast. This is Jerry. This is Gabby. This is Enrique. Come in hot there. I like that a lot. I decided to jump in early this time instead of you throwing it to Enrique early and then this yeah, long you, rambling discussion happens in which he doesn't know what to do or what yeah, to disastrous. say. And then finally I just say, okay, hello, I'm here as well. I have an idea. How about y'all don't talk over each other? My God. Nope. Can't even have a decent podcast around here without Never people. I would like to go through one without oh you d- being so meta. <laughs> just, just. Can you not be so meta? You're the one that's meta all the time. You're the one. Just, you just went on a tirade about what happens during the podcast. I didn't. That's not a tirade. Yes, you tirade. There were words. You don't tirated. Tirade. Tirode. Bigums. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> what? I was trying, to, trying to think of a famous person. My name is Tyrone Biggums. I say old Bean. And Ricky, why are you holding your glass with two hands as you like, like well, a small like, baby? As, well, as you can see, I have very small hands. And it requires both of them on that small glass to hold Sadly, it? Sadly, yes. That's like a baby in a bottle. I know. Did you see him? That's weird. Or do you see, you know what annoys me is the people that when they have a cup of coffee and they hold it with both hands like, oh, it's so cozy and I'm just so cozy. Let, let the pumpkins look around and the, the, the leaves are falling. Let me sip on my coffee with both hands surrounding it. Oh, with I sit in my couch with my legs crossed and it just bothers me. Why is that? Why? I don't know. It's like you're trying to portray this feeling like you've seen one too many episodes of Friends where that's how they held their cups. They held it like that? Yes. Yeah, no, but just hold your hold your coffee cup with one hand. Drink it. No need to. Maybe you're trying to warm it up. Maybe it warm feels warm. Oh, so cozy. You hold it like yeah, that. bothers like, me. I'm sure. Like drinking oh, yeah. Water. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that they drink from those <laughs> mugs without slurping just, too. Just oh, you mean like this? No, drinking from no. his glass. No, <laughs> I've never wanted to hit you more than right now, Enrique. And that's violent. <laughs> just from the way you're holding your glass, I would never hit you. I would. Oh yeah, I'm I know you would. I would not strike anyone. I am pro. We've had this discussion violence. already. Like if you ever strike me, I'm pretty sure I'm, it'd be my first fight ever. To be all honest, do you, she, oh, I uh, would. I, you know what? I would pay to watch that fight. <laughs> we could do it. Set it up on Patreon. Patreon. Start working out. Uh, da, give me da, some da, gloves. Da, da. You know how like that? Like uh, what was the what's the guys that always start in fights? The YouTubers. Uh, the Paul, Paul, uh, Logan, Paul, always fine. That that would be a thing. We we could just have podcasters, board game podcasters, yeah. fight for Isn't charity, it? fighting for charity. Yep, fighting around the world. Uh, Dan, Who is she? Dan Hughes. I'll fight Dan Hughes. <laughs> you have said that repeatedly. Yes, the challenge goes out why. again. <laughs> the challenge goes the out. Challenge goes out once again. <laughs> You'd have fight. to slap him with a glove though, because that's how they did it back in the old days, right? When he, when he wears his little white wig. Like, 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 what do they call those? Powdered, like powdered wigs. wigs. Why were they powdered? Because you keep your head t- dry. Keep it from itching. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm assuming. You wigs. Know, them things had to be hot. Had to be. They, that, it, was, that was so, oh my God, that was such a ridiculous thing. It was just To like wear a, large white powdered wig. It's just like a hat. In parlor. <laughs> it is. Oh, yeah, it's just a hat. I wish that we could bring Just wear your judging hat. I wish we could. I do. I wish we could bring back uh, wigs. I think if we normalized wigs, we'd have less. We'd have so many people that would be less self conscious because you could just change your looks. You wouldn't have. Why? To be bald. Why is it okay for women to wear wigs but not men? 
You, it's okay for men to wear wigs. I mean, I know it is. If you but, would just do it. But there's like a, the, there's a stigma to there's it. There's no stigma. Like, there is a perceived stigma by most men. Uh, oh, a toupee, his toupee fell off. Oh, everybody laughs at you. Well, that's just because it was a comical thing. People used to make fun of it. You don't see it but anymore. But most men not don't proudly anymore. wear a wig. You could start something. You know what? Doing it. Just buy you You just a wig. want me to look silly, don't you? No, it'd look better than your potato head a that you got goose. now. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Sil- there he goes. Insult. No, I'm like. just saying. He's always insulting. Just, already. He just, it just, you he always you. insults. He, doesn't even, he does not know how not to insult. I know. I was just saying... You could. I would support you in any type of fashion. But it's fashion. not what you just I said. I did say that. That's you what tell the me it heard. would look better than my potato head is what you said. Yeah, but like, who I mean, doesn't you like could, potatoes? You could have simply said, if you choose to wear a wig, I would support that. But no, no you said you should. It would look better than your potato head. Speaking of potato he, heads. He can't you, give out a compliment. I can too. No. no. God, no. no, no, no. I don't no, know that Jerry's no, ever no, no, said a positive word. No, no, no. Anyone. He has, but he can't do it without putting an insult into See, it. It's all about raising yourself. This is classic bullying, Enrique. It's classic. <laughs> it's classic. <laughs> like, Tear one person down to boost yourself up. Speaking of potato I do heads, it. do you know that Mr. Potato Head was the first toy to ever be advertised on television? And do you know why? I didn't know. Polio. Polio? Polio. Really? Not Coolio. Polio. So, essentially, there was an outbreak, I believe, in 1952. And because of that, most parents kept their kids indoors, which typically it was kind of odd to keep them home from school, indoors, around television. So, the inventor and the manufacturer of Mr. Potato Head had this idea to advertise this toy on television, which is why... They knew the audience would be there in the home, the kids. And it was the first thing, first time something of that nature had been done, where it's, hey, kids, ask your parents. Da, 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 da. They started that. Mr. Potato Head. How does that relate to polio again? Because the kids were kept indoors because of the polio outbreak at the time. Oh. So. Did I, Forrest Gump have polio? Uh, he had the, he's something wrong with his legs. Hmm. Janae. I hate Jenny. She was the she was awful. Yeah, I really wanted to call her something, but Jenny. I'm pretty sure God would cut it out. That's my boat. Okay, I didn't mean to go off on a random Forrest Gump tangent. I have never liked that movie. What really? I've just never liked it. It's just one of those. I mean, it's you know, it's interesting. He gets in all these predicaments, these world famous predicaments. Oh, there's Forrest Grump in the background. Grump, <laughs> and it was just kind of a, you know, a, it was humorous. It had humorous moments, but it was kind of like a Saturday Night Live skit gone too long. Well, he talked like this the whole time, but yet he won an Academy Award for that. I thought that was a very heartwarming. Show. Oh, I didn't like it. Why not? For one, like you said, Jenny uh, used and abused him. All Forrest wanted was Jenny's love. She uses and abuses him. Then comes back when she's deadly sick and he's rich. Well, she died and he took the kid. And then he's worried about his kid. He took care of the kid, which he dearly loved. <sighs> and he ran all that way for nothing because he just didn't know what to feel. Yeah. I just I don't like that, that story. It's a great show. I disagree. It's like considered to be one of the greatest shows of all times. You don't like you literally don't, I don't like Forrest Gump. You used to have a podcast about movies. I don't like Forrest Gump. And of all the hot takes you've had, this is by far <laughs> the worst. I mean, I you like said Forrest some Gump. dumb stuff on that podcast about I movies. I don't like Forrest Gump. This is the oh, oh, my name Forrest Gump. Oh, <laughs> he talks oh, silly. Like, that was before your. Do you like Forrest Gump? Have you seen Forrest Gump? Never, right? Yes, Forrest I've Gump. seen Forrest Gump. You've it's a good seen. movie. Like, there's a restaurant about Forrest Gump. Like, what's I, it I, called? Bubba Gump. Street? Yeah, Bubba Gump. No, Street. No, wait, I'm when serious. I'm asking Ricky a question. I want no, no, him to I'm serious. He's serious. There is a restaurant I, that I, I went to. No. Why is he always quizzing Enrique? <laughs> Let the boy know stuff. I won't. <laughs> Leave it below. Uh, refer you to the previous podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do a Forrest Gump voice? Uh, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. 
I'm like, it's not good. I can't do it with deep voice. I can't do it. He doesn't it's, have a deep voice. The best yeah. part of that movie is when he's playing ping pong. Oh, yeah. I like the ping pong Life scene. Life is like a box of chocolates. See, just, just, <laughs> just enunciate. Really loud. But, but yeah, Gabby, I, I can't, can't believe. Can't. I can't believe you don't no, like no, Forrest no. Gump. I can't either. Best Tom Hanks movie. Go. <laughs> Apollo 13 came to my head almost instantly. Uh, but I don't, that's, that's. That was like the beginning of his like superstar trajectory as a serious actor. Because he was a comedy actor before that. Well, yes, but I mean, most comedy actors reinvent themselves. But let's see. Philadelphia really... was one that I remember that was like his first. Streets of Philadelphia. Was his na, first. Na, uh, na, na. The Green Mile. He was no, in, that was after all that, though. Well, what, what, what was that one movie of where he's on that boat and it got and he, it gets raided? Oh, you talking Captain about Phillips. Captain yeah, Phillips? Yeah, I like Captain Phillips. I don't Phillips. like Captain Phillips. Really? He was in Catch Me If You Can, which is one of my favorite ones. Yeah, I like I mean, that one. Saving too. Private Ryan. But if we're, if we're talking about like movies. movie, like where he's the main store, <clears throat> well, just like store, anything, no. or just anything, anything that's not okay. considered to be a Tom. He's Hanks. got so many good movies. Well. I know I uh, just done settled it. I just I just was scrolling through here. First off, it, apparently when you Google his movies, A League of Their Own comes up, and so obviously it's going to be a tie between A League of Your Own and You've Got Mail. <laughs> Meg Ryan, remember when Meg Ryan was out there killing it? She was doing her thing. Meg Ryan, Meg Ryan was the. Did you watch the new Elvis movie where he's the uh, uh, manager and speaks in a ridiculous accent the whole movie? He wore a fat suit. No, I did not. It was real bad. No, I did not. I did not. I have not seen the beautiful day in the neighborhood where he's Mister Rogers. I can't bring myself to watch that. Toy Story. All shows. the Toy Story. Yes. He's also got the Dan Brown novels turned movies. I didn't watch any of those. Um, I have not either. There's the one movie, Sully. Sully. Uh, I mean, if you like that well, style, which my wife loves, she'll watch anything true story based. We'll be in the Hudson. <laughs> I was busting up a, uh, a nurse I was working at the night shift. We listened to the actual audio of that plane crash of him just saying, nope, we'll be in the Hudson. And we laughed our heads off the entire time because the the radio the tower guy the guy up in the tower just sounded super panicked, and Sully was like, "Nope, be in the Hudson." <laughs> <laughs> just, just gonna crash this thing in the Hudson. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Sully was a very poor. Uh, it was not very accurate though in terms of the like FAA investigation and things. Like that you nature. know what movies I like as I look at you've got mail. Mm. I love New York based rom coms. Says the man who doesn't like Forrest Gump. <laughs> I just love when New York is the third character in the movie. I hate shows like love that. Love that. It's stupid. The rain has fallen down. I'm like, man, I want to live in New York with no, the extremely high rent and you homeless people know. everywhere. You couldn't <laughs> have to live again in New York. It would be very stressful. I've visited a few times like and I've hated it every time. I've been there. You would die. I didn't and die. You, you can't, Look at me. I'm you, alive right now. You, now, you, part of you did die. I know. Like, something died over there. Where? In New York? Yeah. What do you mean? It's just like it's a part of you. Just like your sanity, maybe. Common sense. Something died over there. Perhaps. Road to Perdition. Great show. Uh, Daniel Craig is a bad guy in that. One of his first actual uh, films. Uh, as far as his Bridge of Spies, you like that, don't you? Love Bridge of Spies. <laughs> okay, I probably have to go with the Toy Story movies and or. Hmm. You think the Toy Story? A man movies? called Aldo was actually very nice. I didn't watch that. You said Toy Story. Okay, the Toy Story movies. That's Tom Hanks' best, the cartoon. Yeah, I swear you used to have a <laughs> podcast about movies where you purported to be an expert. No, I never said that. Yes, I enjoyed yes, movies. Yes, yes. You can talk about things that you're not an expert in. Well, we yeah. do it all the time. I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> oh, I put my opinion out there, but when I'm experting, I let people know I am experting. At what? Board game opinions. Oh, 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 yes. Various other things that I speak on. I'm a healthcare professional. 
besides that? I mean, you purport yourself as an expert on almost everything you say. No, I don't. You do. I don't say that. You, you just you you, believe it, though. No, here's, you don't here's the thing. Here's the thing. You and here's believe it. No, here's the thing that you need to encompass. You lack so much. Can attacking you listen? Me. Can you? Go. No, He's no, no. Me. Can you listen? Okay. Can you listen with both ears? Don't you condescend to me. I'm just asking me. a question. I may not listen now. Listen, you have no confidence. So anytime somebody shows confidence, you come across as thinking that they're overconfident. Jerry. There you go. <laughs> you. <laughs> there you go. Do not. You're, yes. When everyone realizes that about you specifically. Yes. Who does? You're. Who? Who? You purport yourself. No. Everybody. You speak with great authority, and most of the time you're wrong. Who says? Everyone in our group on the Facebook and listeners are like, when Jerry said this so matter-of-factly as your- if it was facts, and it was wrong. They have a, who? You're what? wrong. Give me some- all- but yet, oh, here yes. you go. Here you go. You get defensive immediately because you know I'm, I'm right. I'm not defensive. Yes, you are. No, you're because completely- you say things wrong all the time. But do you not agree? That your lack of confidence, anybody sounds the least bit confidence, you just go, oh, they're just blah, 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 blah. No. Yes. No, it's the way in which you say things. No, it's I not, just say things. I listen to a podcast or YouTube with experts all the time. I'm like, they sound like they know what they're talking about, and they're not being, you know, arrogant about it. I'm not arrogant. <sighs> it just sounds that way to you. Not just to me. Who? Nobody. You have no idea. You have Facebook. no please, ability to look at please. yourself and say, hmm. Peasants. <laughs> okay, right. These people's opinions. Maybe I might be this way. I might need to work on this. Please. <laughs> please. You have no idea. Please. If you please. can name something or point something out, I'll, I'll, I, I'll, I'll, I can't help that you're not involved in your own group on Board Game Snobs on Facebook and or Discord. Hey, nobody says I'm on there all the time. I've no, never seen should. anything. I posted not. stuff constantly. You have selective vision. Post stuff constantly. I never, I'm serious. I never, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I don't know what you're talking Enrique, about. Enrique, you look wide eyed over there. Hey, I'm just enjoying the show. You can just keep going. <laughs> There's no show to see here. There is always a show when I'm with you too. You, you know, know what? You know what that about? That's, that's an interesting you thing you say that. There's always a show when you are with us. For, you know, we recorded two podcasts when you weren't here. Guess how we got along? Fam- Quite fine. Famous, Swimmingly. Famously. Famously. <laughs> Famously. <laughs> I am the cause of all this. Something chaos. about Enrique triggers this in you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, trying to show out for you, Enrique. That's what it is. <laughs> maybe, but, maybe, you know, common denominator. Just saying. Uh, who knows? Maybe you should look at yourself, Enrique. Maybe you should try to promote peace between us instead of just sitting there enjoying the show. I promote You're peace. You're over there going, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, yes. Keep fighting for my enjoyment. Oh, mm-hmm. Another voice. Another voice. I'm not sure what it was, but that was another voice. It was a voice. That's that was all it weird. Was. That okay. Was a very weird voice. Here we go. This is a game we played last time with Jer 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 Bear. Who? And Enrique wasn't here. You know I don't like this. Well, you're gonna deal with it. What are you? What are you playing? Finish the punchline. He doesn't know any jokes. It's besides you. Ha! Why do fathers? So as a punchline. So think of a punchline. <laughs> Why do fathers take an extra pair of socks when they go golfing? I wouldn't know. In case they get, I I, I don't know. I, I can't I can't think of anything. I'm sorry, Jerry. Why do they take socks? Fathers take socks. An extra pair of socks when they go golfing. In case they get a oh. hole in one. Hey. <laughs> what is, is, like, you didn't get it? Yes. Oh, all in one. oh my god. You have to think outside the box. I know. Alright, next next one. Is it another one? Another one. Oh no. DJ Khaled. What do a tick and the Eiffel Tower have in common? Tick and the Eiffel Tower. They're both. <laughs> uh, 
the Tick and the Eiffel Tower have something in common. They're both. Uh, tick and the Eiffel Tower. You know it. I know this one is going to kill me. <laughs> What's a tick? It's an insect. Or a parasite. Oh. It's a parasite. A parasite. <laughs> They're both parasites. It's so stupid. This is what I got to deal with. This is what he thinks is called... He insists on doing this. <laughs> when did this transpire? Uh, just a couple episodes back, he started this. But I can't escape it. He thinks it's like some sort of game show. You just really busted wow. up. Wow, Enrique wow. Enrique's lost it. Hard. He's gone. He's gone. I lost it because it's so stupid. <laughs> All right, one more. Okay. <laughs> My wife said. My wife. I should do lunges to stay in shape. You really should. She said it would be a big... Your wife. Lunges to stay in shape. My wife said I should do (laughs) lunges to stay in shape. She said it would be a big... Fill in that punchline. In my health. On a big leap, a big step. Big step in my health. A big, a big, a big step forward in my oh, health. Oh yeah. So, oh, so okay. I don't like that one. That wasn't that good. It's not that good. That's some we can all be winners. Okay. All right. That's uh, finish the punchline. Thank you. I'm, I apo- I'm. I feel so sorry for you. I know that you had to I deal with this for the last couple of episodes without me. <laughs> Just the previous, no, the one, two or three before this one. <laughs> We gotta do something special for our three hundredth episode. Well, let's worry about that in twenty weeks. Still, I'm always thinking ahead, <laughs> plan ahead. Love you. Plan you put like on. a video of me, and, me and, and, and ultimately we Damn. won't be able to do much because of our limited time and ability to get together. Why so are you it's just, always so negative? I just it's you're just, always it's, so negative. I'm not like, negative. I'm realistic. No, you're not. You just start. Oh, what whatever. are we gonna do? We can do a live show, <laughs> a call in show. No, we're not the, doing a drop live. show. <laughs> the drop button. That way, when Mark comes calls in and starts cursing, we can cut him off. You know, hey, we do great. <laughs> We can do a call-in show, do but call-in I don't show. know that that's going to be episode 300. Yeah. Episode 300, call-in show. Mm. That's what the people want. And now, for your pleasure, a board game review. We played a game today that I wanted to play for quite some time. By Fabio Lopino. Is that you said that name? Lopino? Lopino. You wanted to play for quite some time. Again. Merv. Yes, we played it once before. It's got Eno Tool Art. It's an OG game, Osprey Games. Merv came out a couple years back. And I remember really being frustrated by this. I remember doing the podcast about it back when. And I realized it was the rule book that got me. I knew something was about it. There's just some things about this game that really confuses me. And then when we got to play it, instantly it came to mind. Dealing with these various three different tracks. Merv, you know about Merv? Uh, just based on the the what I had read previously, but I've already forgotten. It's like the something to do with the Silk Road. It was a key commerce location. Yeah, Turkmenistan, Turkmenistan. How do I say that? Turkmenistan, Turment, Turkmenistan. How do you say that? That sounds closer. That sounds closer. Along the Silk Road, Merv is like one of the biggest cities. In this game, it's very abstract because basically what you're doing is placing your little meeple around an Irondale. That's action. my boy. And as you're doing that, you're taking one of the actions based out there and being able to build your little shop. And that neat little mechanism is all that it is. You're just placing your guy, doing what, picking one of the houses or little uh, building spaces and doing the action. And building your little house there if it's empty. And that way, later on, when you somebody utilizes that spot, you get more resources. Wrench dry, repeat. The resources are even nondescript. They're just various color cubes that are whatever. You just use them to either buy a various caravan card, which is kind of like set collection, run up these various tracks. The whole game is just very, very abstract. But I think the reason I like it so much is that idea of how everything is interconnected. You have to be up on this track to get favor. 
And once you have favor, then you can fill these different contracts, and then you need to go out and do trading. Everything is interconnected, and I think that's what's so nice about this game. It also has a solo for which I've never played. But uh, either way, I, I again, this game frustrates me. I don't want to like this game. I don't want to like it. Every time I play it, I get frustrated with it. One, the rule book is not that great. And two, just all this couple of tracks and seeing how everything connects, it's just too abstract for me. But yet, every time I we get done with it, I want to play it again. I enjoy it that much because it's it's so simple, but yet so interconnected. Uh, Games in a Nutshell has an excellent playthrough video. If you don't want to uh, trudge through the rule book, <clears throat> I like this game a lot, especially after this last play. We liked it previously. We just needed to refresh ourselves because we have all these games. We don't get to play two of that often. But anyway, we refreshed ourselves on this one. And I liked it just as much, if not more than previously. I like the the the, the every the location in the center when you go build your building or trigger your a building. You can do one of three actions. You can do the action on the building. And then that building, when you get your resource, that triggers all the buildings in that row of whichever building. Generally, you want to do your own buildings, but you might end up triggering an opponent's building. They get a small benefit, but you get all the resources from all that building in that row and or column. No, row or column, depending. So then you can do the action on the building, or you can run up this other track called favor, or you can get a a soldier out there to protect that building when the raids come. <clears throat> I like that fact in it. There's several decisions to make just there. Then, depending on which building you choose, well, which track are you going to run up? I would say, like Jerry said, there's three tracks you're basically running up in this game, and then there's the card collection. I would say most games... A lot of games you kind of do good doing a little dabble in a little bit of all of them. This is not one of those games. I think in this game you have to specialize in two of those tracks. Because I dabbled in a lot of them and I did not do well. Because I was trying to run up this other track off on the left, the, the whatever the one is, the mosque track. And it didn't do me any good, really. And you got to get way up on that one to start getting points. Enrique did real well on the influence. He got all those points, but all the way to the end, Enrique scored very well. He was just one point behind Jerry in the ultimate scoring, and I was 10 points behind. It's very close, even with my poor play. But Jerry scored a lot of points off his cards, and then down there in the palace, you can put one of your meeples in there as one of your possible actions, and it scores you points every round of scoring. So that's a nice thing to have. I like the first round. They're nice to you. They don't raid you. They don't destroy your building. So you can kind of get established. But then the next two... Two, two rounds. Yeah, two rounds. The next two rounds, you will be raided. And if you do not have your building protected, it will get destroyed. You protect it with either soldiers or walls. And all of those are things to take into account when you're doing these actions. Are you going to build walls and run up your influence? Well, if you run up your influence, well, then you're going to affect also some of your favor. Uh, you're going to want to do those two tracks kind of intermingle really well together. Then if you're going to go like Enrique did, heavy into contracts, well, then you're over there trading with for the spices, the common goods, the rare goods and all that stuff. I like the variety in this. And like I said, but you, to me, you really kind of have to pick which lane you're going to go with and kind of go with that pretty hard. I did not make that decision early enough, and it cost me points. But I like this game a lot. The only track I don't care for is that Mox track. That They could completely do away with that track to me. You can run up and get a few little you know, upgrades to your building tiles. That's nice, I guess. It's just another option. I think it's, I, think it's another, I, don't think, I think it's another <clears throat> means of winning. I think that there's probably. I'd like to try it again next time and just do that and see if it makes a difference. Yeah, and it's yeah. I, I, that that was the one y'all touched. I don't even know if y'all touched it. You may have went on it yeah, once, I, I, once, like once. Yeah. yeah, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's supposed to combine with the the favor track at least. I think it does have something to do with that. But either way, this game is very interesting because it it combines all these various things together, and they work very intricately. They work very well. And it's it's still very abstract, but I think the ENO tool art kind of brings everything out. I don't know why I, I just struggle with this game. And those are the camels things. The camels are used. Yeah. 
It's for bonuses. Different. You can uh, the, advance your place on the uh, turn order if you use camels uh, to pour, uh, on the way it's set to up. Just the turn order, yeah. Uh, the center thing, you can place a camel on it in the columns <laughs> and rows and earn extra things. When you're purchasing cards, you use camels. If you don't want to buy the cards that are available, you can go up a few cards if you burn camels to do that. Same thing with when you're getting the spices. You, If you're going to a city that's far away from you, you have to put a camel down there. So just everything in this game really is, is it is like Enrique said, it's like everything is just so tight and necessary and you have to do this to do that to do this. I like that aspect of it. I even though the the rule book is frustrating as Jerry's going through it, but it's oh, it's like if you like that. dry Euro games and you're looking for something a little bit different, this is a little slightly heavier than the I would say in terms of the mid weight stuff. It's on the heavier side. Yeah, it's not overly because there's many decisions. There's, to there's make. a lot of decisions, but typically just one main action that you're doing just going around the board. I think Merv is something that was popular when it came out. Now everybody's forgotten about it. It's an OG game, so it's a great production, and I I don't see people talk about it a whole lot at, at at all. Like most board games, they tend to come and go. But Merv is certainly one you need to look at again because I've it's it's hung in our collection. And OG makes great games, and I really like the. It's a fast game. It's a it's a middleweight game. There's a lot of components. But it's quick. It's, There's 12 yeah. turns, you're done. It's surprisingly quick. And it's quick to learn, but it's just, you can't you can't rely on that rule book whatsoever. Yeah, rule book to me, it was very frustrating. It's atrocious, apparently. It's just, it's not good. We thank had to look up videos on how to play this Thank you for backing game. me up, Enrique. That's what I like about you. That's what I like about you. you. Mm. What I like about you is because you agree with me. Well, like I agree on like sensible things. I'm, well, I'm always sensible, so you always agree. Like I agree with Gabi sometimes. Very because... well, every once in a while, <laughs> he is. He makes he makes a decent point, and he's sensible when he's not emotionally unstable. I'm not emotionally unstable. You're not right now. Sometimes, oh yeah. I said emotion. right now. It's the ball. <laughs> so don't don't anger him. Don't look him in the eye. He's got that wild look Ooh, in his eye. My nostrils are flaring. He's flaring. <laughs> his nostrils are flaring. His rectum is tightening. <laughs> he's, he's, he's about to charge. It's like a rhino. My nostrils are flaring. My rectum's tight. <laughs> that sounds like a... What show is that? Cake. That song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like cake. Oh. But Merv was a good game, though. Here Very we go. Nice Bringing game. it back to the primary thing we're just here to discuss, and that's a board game called Merv. Mm. Uh, two thumbs up from this guy. Same. Scale of one to ten, Henry Gay. Ooh. No, it has to be an eight. An eight. I'll it take has it. To be. I'll take it because it has to be an because eight. the the rule book is just. I like how you're bringing out the, so hard the rule book that you it, didn't even look at. But he's going off of me. <laughs> yeah, I'm t- it, I'm t- I said if, if Jerry good. can't like learn a if game, if Jerry can't learn <laughs> this off the, the rule book, <laughs> then we it's a problem. That's why you need Nathrania. I know Nathrania. from Games in a Nutshell. <laughs> this is Nathrania. That's a great channel. Uh, it's where I watch all my gaming rules. That with Rodney. Which I can, you know, Rodney Smith. He's now, a Rodney puts out a lot though that he, Rodney doesn't have. Well, he he he's, he's <laughs> smart. He's looking at where what he's That's filling right. the gap that Rodney isn't is now. As soon as I see a how to play video that's over forty five minutes, I'm out. And some of those teach videos are super long. Well, you have to get people to understand it. Nothing you didn't. That was like a thirty minute video. 30 minutes is still a long time. Well, you, so do you think 15 minutes makes the difference? Either way, uh, if you are a RPG gamer, Enrique's wanting to do another RPG, oh, yeah. and I need assistance as the GM, especially with if we do the Alien RPG. If you yourself play RPGs, Which please. Uh, the alien. Uh, alien RPG. Have you told Gobby? I've already told Gobby. He's forgotten. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I told him. Yes, I told him. Uh, the Alien RPG. So if you have any... Tips or suggestions on how to do such a thing, please email us boardgamesoftgmail.com. We have the Star Trek and the. Uh, we said alien. We've already said the alien. I know, but I well, we know we we also have nobody the Star cares Trek. what what he wants to do. The alien one, the oh, good one. Okay. Huh? All right. 
There you go. We also have the uh, Raiders of the North Sea RPG. You keep buying all that stuff that nobody <laughs> plays. I don't keep buying it. I bought it five years ago. We've never played it. I know. You, and then you bought the Star Trek one. Nobody played. That was four years ago. So there you go. You keep buying Jesus. RPGs, and then <laughs> and then it. when we do do an RPG, you ruin it. And then you don't release the episode for which you ruined it. Did you ever release the episode no, of Ten Candles? No, because it was five people talking over each other. It was a great episode. It's five people. No, you cut it because that was the one no. where everybody called you out. Oh. Nobody called me out. Everyone had a great time with what I was doing. No. Oh, my. You were the only one upset, no, as you always no. are. Release the episode. Release, Release the, the episode. episode. Release. Unedited. Release. Unedited. I'm not going to lie. Release, Release the episode. Release the gobby cut. Hold him responsible. Or nah. stops at yeah. gmail. yeah. gmail.com. This is Jerry. This is Gabby. This is Thank you for tolerating this episode of the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. <laughs>